least once. Alright, I'm not gonna be like that guy. Manamana. Manamana. Hey guys, it's Vitruvian Physique. Thank you for stopping by. Today, um, I have a video backed by very popular demand. Um, we are going to be talking about creatine because this is something which I have seen so much misinformation about and it's kind of unfortunate because it's a very useful, safe and effective tool which I think a lot of people, especially younger guys, those newer to fitness, are missing out because of some of the negative and inaccurate stigma behind it which I'm going to go through in this video. So without further ado, welcome to Creatine 101. Class is in session and I am your teacher. Throughout this video, I'm going to be mentioning several resources, but my main one is by far examine.com. This is a fantastic website which takes a lot of scientific information, summarizes it, aggregates it in a very unbiased manner. So if you guys are ever interested in doing your own research, I highly recommend this website. Creatine is an organic molecule. It's a peptide, which means it's kind of like a protein and uh, it's actually found in your body. Um, it's synthesized via amino acids, specifically glycine and arginine in the kidneys and liver and then it's transferred throughout your body via the bloodstream to wherever it needs to go so your body can actually make its own creatine but you can also get it from food sources typically animal products um, very high in meat uh, things like beef chicken fish some in dairy this is actually where the term creatine comes from um, because meat in Greek means creus creus creatine you get the picture Unfortunately, there are lower concentrations of creatine found in plant-based foods such as vegetables. That's why there was actually a study done which proved that there were significantly lower um, natural levels of creatine found throughout the body for vegetarians um, versus people who you know, have regular diets consisting of animal and non-animal based products. Fortunately, both groups concentrations of creatine went up after they started supplementing with exogenous creatine, which coincidentally is the purpose of this video. So what your body actually does when it intakes food, um, as it metabolizes it, it always wants to break it down into smaller pieces. Um, taking carbohydrates, for example, being that carbohydrates are your body's favorite and fastest um, source of energy, it's going to try to break it down um, into glucose, which is like a very small carbohydrate. Then through a system of crazy, complex biological pathways, it always ends up with the same result. It takes a molecule called ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and turns it into ATP, the exact same thing except triphosphate. So there's an extra phosphate now. I'm not going to get super in depth on this. All you have to know is that ATP is the energized version. When your body actually needs energy for whatever purposes, in this case skeletal muscle contraction, um, it could take ATP, break it back down to ADP releasing energy, which it can then use for whatever purposes. And it's going to keep on doing this and cycling it over. But for your body to, you know, take that ADP and turn it back into ATP, it needs energy, which comes from food. So it's funny, like all these different sources, fats, proteins, carbohydrates, glucose, fructose, whatever, it all ends up in the exact same thing. The key powerhouse uh, molecule for your body is ATP. <laughs> is that it acts kind of like a defensive line because it actually also has the ability to bind phosphates. So it binds the phosphate group, then transports it to wherever you need it, wherever you know, you're doing the exercise or whatever it may be um, in the form of phosphocreatine. Then when it gets there, it could release that phosphate um, and it could you know, facilitate this reuptake and really increase the speed of this cycle. Remember, ADP to ATP and back again. You know, it's, This is happening all the time and uh, the creatine can kind of like it almost like adds into that and speeds the cycle up and it helps you get a little bit additional energy for whatever it is you may be doing. All you have to understand is that more ATP means more access to energy. Creatine helps you get more ATP, more energy um, means more contractility, more force production, and this is going to increase your strength and potentially your endurance while working out. So creatine actually has two purposes. Number one, as I just mentioned, increases strength, increases endurance, just you have better workouts. And number two, you are actually going to get a small marginal increase in muscle size. The reason why this happens is because once creatine you know, is within your muscles, it actually binds and has a very high affinity for water. So it's actually going to pull water into your muscles and because of that, you know, 
they're gonna increase in size just a little bit. So at its core, I wanna emphasize that in my opinion, creatine is what I call a performance-based supplement. It's gonna make you stronger, make you have longer, better workouts. There is a very small aesthetics or size visual component to it, but honestly, I think the breakdown is like 90-10. So if you're buying creatine for the explicit purpose of getting bigger, you might be a little bit disappointed. The only way that I could see it actually increasing um, lean body mass would be because you are pushing more weight. So essentially, if you're at 200 pounds, but you're lifting as much as you should be lifting if you were 210 pounds because of the additional energy you have, then perhaps your body will just over time actually get to 210 pounds because that's how much weight you're lifting. Even though, you know, 5% of your strength isn't actually you, it's that additional energy coming from creatine. But again, that, that part is very bro sciencey um, at its core, once again, performance-based supplement. You will not build additional lean muscle mass solely because of creatine, because it is not a steroid. This is one of the craziest things that I've heard before. So this is a post I found online um, by a mom concerned with her son taking creatine. Uh, this was on the Oprah Winfrey website forum, because apparently that's the best place to learn about bodybuilding. Either way, she goes on to describe how her son is doing something called the death lift. And um, he is taking uh, the steroid creatine, and she seems to be very concerned about that. No, that is 100% false. That could not be farther from the truth. Steroids specifically, by definition, are synthetically produced um, hormones similar to that which we produce in the human body. Um, for men, specifically, you know, like testosterone, steroids will actually go into the body, mimic their natural counterparts, and, you know, via... Uh, androgenic receptors signal you to get bigger, grow faster, recover. That is not the case here. Um, that's why it's found in food. It is a 100% natural compound. Um, you will test okay with any drug test. I've competed in three bodybuilding and one powerlifting competition. I took creatine the day of, the week before, the week after. It doesn't matter. Um, you are 100% natural and okay. Creatine will not make you burn fat. Um, that's just not what it's made to do. It's made for strength and a tiny bit of size via water retention. Um, the only things that would make you burn fat would be powerful thermogenics, something like ephedrine or clenbuterol, which is like, you know, actual legit drugs. If any of you guys think that creatine has any fat burning properties, that is 100% incorrect. And the fact that I have seen some supplements out there, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna name any and get sued or anything, but I've seen some supplements out there sold at very expensive prices, and they're selling this stuff once again, thanks to the, you know, the wonders of the supplement bullshit marketing industry as a fat burner or like a, you know, some really general names like toner, honestly, who the, what the fuck does toner mean? And sometimes the key ingredients in these supplements, which are promising to get you, I guess, bigger and leaner, um, is creatine, which is funny because it doesn't do that. Not only is there no science proving that it does, there is science proving the exact opposite, that it doesn't do that. In fact, it makes you heavier because it increases water. The last thing I want to mention in regards to what it doesn't do is the concept of the creatine bloat. Guys, this is a myth. Some people believe because the second they hear the word water retention, they're like, that's it, fat. If I pull in water, I'm going to get, you know, fat and I'm going to lose all my cuts. And number one, that's not the case because there's a very big difference between water and fat. Water you can lose in one day. You know, you pee it out, you're done. Fat, not exactly the case. We've all been there with a six month contest prep. In addition, when it pulls the water in, it pulls most of it um, intracellularly, which means that your actual muscle cells are gonna pull the water in, not as much subcutaneously, which, which is that, you know, that little layer of, you know, under the skin, but above the, above the muscle, which is what people are afraid of, because, you know, if you get subcutaneous fat, that's what covers up the shreds or the abs or whatever. So do not worry. The whole concept of the creatine bloat is not real, as long as you stick to at least somewhat reasonable dosages. Another interesting point I want to mention, this actually came from a comment on one of my videos. Somebody asked, um, does creatine cause or speed up male pattern baldness? And I thought, no, that's ridiculous. You know, what are you talking about? But when I was actually looking into it for the purpose of this video, I found that that's actually not all that crazy. It turns out that there are some, you know, decent-ish kind of questionable, but okay, studies which um, seem to imply that creatine actually increases DHT. And DHT is important because that is a chemical which in your body has been shown to have associations with actually balding in men. So in a sense that you can say, does creatine I guess speed up or you know essentially cause 
um, balding. I every fiber in my body wants to say no, but according to this, you know, the science, there is a small possibility of that actually being true. So I want to say it's plausible and I think that 99% of my viewers this will not be a factor and unfortunately for those 1% they were probably gonna go bald anyways this may have just sped up the process a little bit and again this is something I wanted to mention but the science is a little shaky for my taste so one thing a lot of companies advocate is this thing called creatine loading so what this is is pretty much instead of taking the regular maintenance amount you are going to be taking higher amounts for example I think 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight is an example target which works out to about 20 to 25 grams of creatine per day and they recommend you do it for about four to five days um, this works out to about four scoops so maybe take like two in the morning two in the evening that way you don't just take all of them at the same time i've heard that if you take so much creatine in one period you may get a little bit nauseous so the reason you do this is to pretty much super saturate your muscles very quickly um, with creatine and then afterwards you were able to maintain. Do you have to do this? Absolutely not. People who just took the regular maintenance amount right from the beginning um, in the long term experience the exact same you know long-term creatine concentrations as people who immediately you know did a loading saturation phase and then maintain. The only difference is speed so pretty much you're gonna end up in the exact same creatine concentration levels within your muscles except if you load maybe you'll get like that in a week and if you don't load, maybe it's gonna take you two to three weeks. So if you wanna experience the effects of creatine faster, sure, go for four to five days of loading. And then afterwards you can maintain. Lots of people advocate one scoop, um, which you know is the standard that comes, um, you know, that little plastic scoop that comes in your creatine powders, usually it's about five grams. That is 100% enough, that's more than enough in fact. Um, according to examine.com, they actually advocate 0.03 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight, which for me works out to like, it's like 2.5, maybe three grams at most. So guys, if you were taking a scoop that is 100% more than enough, um, the weirdest and craziest things I've heard is people who took the loading phase and just kept it going indefinitely. So they didn't do four to five days. I once talked to a guy and he was like, hey man, like he was a young, he was a young guy just getting into bodybuilding. He was interested in getting bigger. He hears creatine, he's like, What's, what's this creatine? What's this, what's this magical legal steroid they sell at GNC and like, you know, look at Walmart. And um, he heard that his friend is like, he took apparently 20 grams of creatine every single day indefinitely. And apparently this guy like blew up and he was just like, the point is it's absolutely 100% ridiculous. In the long run, I don't think you'll have any negative health repercussions. There's actually a study where someone took um, 20 grams of creatine per day for an extended period of time and you know they are okay but you're pretty much just pissing your money away because once your muscles are saturated with creatine it essentially doesn't matter all you have to do is take that little maintenance phase and um, you'll be 100 percent okay the time of day at which you take creatine doesn't matter i've heard a lot of people saying that they take it pre-workout and there is absolutely no point in that. I mean, it's not bad, it's not good, it doesn't matter. Your muscles need to saturate with creatine, which is gonna take you several days, if not you know, a week or more, which is why you do that loading phase, because this takes a little bit of time. So it's kind of like you build it up and then you maintain it, but it's not like if you forget to take creatine in one day, especially before your workout, it just falls apart. It doesn't work like that. This is a longer process. So take it at night, take it before bed, take it before workout, after workout, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you are taking the required maintenance phase every single day. One little note of precaution I wanna mention is if you are going to take creatine pre-workout in addition you know, with your pre-workout supplement, lots of times these supplements contain caffeine. And there actually um, was a study done which seemed to imply a small, not, you know, not confirmed, but a small issue when it comes to that pretty much, you know, caffeine would essentially cancel out creatine um, once ingested in similar time intervals, I guess. So I would advocate that you don't take creatine, you know, in a similar time interval when you're taking coffee, maybe wait a couple hours between the two. And the same goes for when you're taking a pre-workout. So I think a very easy, safe, um, consistent time would be before bed because you're probably not taking any coffee since you know you want to sleep and you're probably not taking any pre-workouts because you want to sleep you do not have to cycle off I believe that the reason that there's this whole concept of you know cycling three months of creatine on and then one month off comes from the myth that you know it's similar or creatine is a steroid and once again guys we already debunked that that is bullshit um, creatine will not have any negative side effects on your health. I have been on creatine for years. Legit, I've been taking five grams a day 
for the, at least the last two to three years, whether I'm bulking, dieting, contest prep, doesn't matter. Um, there is no adverse health effects. Some people say it's bad because your body is going to slow down its natural production of creatine. That is, you know, I'm not saying it's bro science, but you know, that hasn't been really tested and shown. In addition, you're going to be getting the actual creatine molecule itself from food sources such as meat. Once again, whether you're getting it from a supplement, whether you're getting it from food, you don't have as much requirement anymore to synthesize it manually. And even, let's say hypothetically, your body did slow down its natural synthesis of creatine. Who cares? This stuff is healthy, you can be on it all year round, and it's cheap as hell. I get a six month supply for like $30 Canadian. So like I said, I've been taking this myself for years now, every single day. I do not see personally or via the science, via physiological reason, why anyone would need to cycle off. A little word of caution, um, this video is gonna apply to 99% of people um, who have regular health conditions, but individuals who are diabetic, or who may have kidney issues or be genetically predispositioned to kidney issues. Um, there was actually an article um, in the Mayo Clinic, which you know kind of hinted that creatine supplementation, not that it's you know gonna do anything terrible for you, but they just have to approach it with a little bit of additional caution. So if you're watching this video and you are interested in creatine and you have any of these health side effects or health conditions that I mentioned, um, maybe just do a little bit more personal research. That's it guys, um, so, in conclusion, creatine is awesome, it's cheap, it's um, somewhat effective. There is no reason why anybody should not be on this stuff if you can afford it. But I also wanna really reiterate that although it's good, do not expect it to be magic. You are not going to wake up in one month with 20 extra pounds of lean body mass. You are not gonna walk in the gym tomorrow and lift you know, 30 pounds more than you did yesterday for the same amount of reps. It could help you, but it's not magic. What do you expect for 30 bucks?